But on the other side, on the instrumental side, the idea that your body is something that is more of an instrument that you, it's not you, it's just what you use to do things with, right? Well, on the positive side, right? And think about it. I mean, young men, even though, yes, their bodies have male characteristics, they don't always feel, I'm a man, right? Mm -hmm. Just knowing that they have a male <laughs> body, men tend to feel that they have to sort of go around and prove that they're a man. They have to use, they have to use that body to do something, to accomplish something that they're proud of, right? And again, through the centuries, right? Through the millennium, uh, we have male initiation rights, right? You have to go hunt that deer or score that touchdown or, you know, even on a more intellectual level, win that debate. You know, men often feel that they're not really worthy of being called a man until they do something um, that is then sort of praised, respected, affirmed, which means that they tend to not identify with their bodies. They identify with their accomplishments. Men tend to identify with the work that they do with their bodies. Now, on a positive note, there's something good about that. Because by saying, I'm not my body, they automatically have an intuition that they're more than that. I'm more than just my body. Look what I can do, right? Look what I can do, of course, with our imagination, our thoughts, our mind. You know, we execute things with the body, but that, that there's an awareness that, hey, I'm not just my body. I am this. And so being aware that your, act, your identity is actually goes beyond just your physical dimension is good and it's healthy. And sometimes it's a good antidote for women who, if they're struggling with accepting the way their body looks, no, get out of that. Go do something, accomplish something that you can then be proud of. And it can really expand your sense of spiritual identity. I'm more than just my body. Look what I was able to do, right? And whether it be, you know, intellectual work, hey, maybe it's accomplishment through sports. Maybe it's charity work. Maybe it's, um, an art, a craft, a hobby, whatever it is, doing something, using your mind, right, to then do something in and through your body um, reminds you, and then you have something to rest in, a sense of accomplishment and identity that sort of goes beyond your body. Um, men kind of have that a little bit more naturally. On the other hand, if you only identify with your work and you don't identify with your body, there are some serious problems, right? You're more at risk at seeing your body as just an instrument, something I do things with, well, great. Then you might view a woman as, and her body as, just an instrument, just something you do things with. So there's, of course, that deep danger, that profound wound of the potential toward objectification that we see in our very fallen world. Um, but also, if you only identify with your work, with your deeds, with what you do, you do risk being crushed when what you do fails, right? Mm -hmm. Men and their sense of masculinity is threatened when they fail, uh, when they're unemployed, when they're injured, when things happen that um, keep them from being able to be proud of an accomplishment, their sense of identity is very much at risk. And that's something that women can help with. A woman can say, no, you are distinct from what you do, right? I love you for you, right? You are good. You are wonderful. And the man's like, ah, I don't have any, I didn't do anything. I didn't do it well, right? So we do together have the capacity, I think, to um, to affirm one another in the ways that sort of along those gender lines, we sometimes um, become vulnerable. We think, oh, you know, the, the particular, I guess I'd call those fallen wounds that sort of fall along gender lines. Mm -hmm.